Recording in progress. Thank you to all of you who are joining us in person and on Zoom. It is good to have you with us. I invite you to prepare your hearts and minds for worship by listening to our prelude. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Please stand as you are able and join with me in singing our gathering hymn from the Evangelical Lutheran Worship Hymnal, hymn number 373, Christ the Lord is risen today. The music is printed in a large print bulletin and is available in the hymnal and the words will be projected on your screen. Christ the Lord is risen today. All on earth the angels say, raise your joys and triumphs on. Sing, O heavens, earth with love. Love's redeeming work is done. Fight the fight, the battle won. Praise the sun's eclipses all. Though we set sin blood no more. Vain the zone, the watch, the seal. Christ has burst the gates of hell. Death in things forbids his wrong. Christ has opened paradise. Waves again our glorious King. Where our death is now young. 
your soul of bliss. Everlasting life is this. Be to know thy power to prove. Thus to sing and thus to The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Please join me, join with me in singing our Kyrie and hymn of praise. It can be found in the front of the ELW hymnal on pages 193 and 194, and then the hymn of praise is 195 and 196. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace from above and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace of the whole world for the well-being of the church of God, for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of God the Father, O God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of the God the Father. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Eternal and all merciful God. With all the angels and all the saints, we laud your majesty and might. By the resurrection of your Son, show yourself to us and inspire us to follow Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for our readings. reading from Acts. Saul, 
still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues of Damascus, so that if he found any who belonged to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now as he was going along and approaching Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked, Who are you, Lord? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless, because they heard the voice but saw no one. Saul got up from the ground, and though his eyes were open, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. For three days he was without sight and neither ate or drank. Now there was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, he answered, Here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight, and at the house of Judas look for a man of Tarsus named Saul. At this moment he is praying, and he has seen in a vision a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him, so that he might regain his sight. But Ananias answered, Lord, I haven't heard from many, I have heard from many about this man, how much evil he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who invoke your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is an instrument whom I have chosen to bring my name before Gentiles and kings and before the people of Israel. I myself will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. So Ananias went and entered the house. He laid his hands on Saul and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on your way here, has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales fell from his eyes, and his sight was restored. Then he got up and was baptized, and after taking some food, he regained his strength. For several days he was with the disciples in Damascus, and immediately he began to proclaim Jesus in the synagogue, saying, He is the Son of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let us recite together Psalm 30 as translated in the Evangelical Lutheran Worship Hymnal. I will exalt you, O Lord, because you have lifted me up and have not let my enemies triumph over me. O Lord, my God, I cried out to you, and you restored me to health. You brought me up, O Lord, from the dead. You restored my life as I was going down to the grave. Sing praise to the Lord, all you faithful. Give thanks in holy remembrance. God's wrath is short. God's favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping spends the night, but joy comes in the morning. While I felt secure, I said, I shall never be disturbed. You, Lord, in your favor, made me as strong as the mountains. Then you hid your face, and I was filled with fear. I cried to you, O Lord. I pleaded with my Lord, saying, What profit is there in my blood if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you or declare your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my wailing into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and clothed me in joy. Therefore, my heart sings to you without ceasing. O Lord, my God, I will give you thanks forever. A reading from Revelation. Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels surrounding the throne and the living creatures and the elders. They numbered myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, singing with full voice. Worthy is the lamb that was slaughtered to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea 
and all that is in them singing. To the one seated on the throne and to the Lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshiped. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you're able for the reading of our gospel. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, you, O Lord. After he appeared to his followers in Jerusalem, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, we will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, no. He said to them, cast the net to the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast it. And now they were, they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you have caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, a hundred and fifty-three of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Truly I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and to go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said to him, follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to be seated and our youth and young at heart to come forward at this time. Mm -hmm. 
Little Legs has to greet his public. So today we're going to hear the story of Saul changing his life and having his name changed to Paul. Saul was a bully, and he hated anyone who was a Christian. Saul wanted all Christians thrown in jail, but God had other plans for Saul. Even though Saul was a mean person, God loved him and had a big surprise for him. Saul had been ordered to go to Damascus. He smiled slyly to himself. If any Christians lived in Damascus, he would find them. He would arrest them and bring them back to Jerusalem. Saul smiled confidently. He had arrested Christians a hundred times before, and he could do it again. But suddenly, swirls of dust blew up from the road. Saul covered his eyes with his arm. Storm's coming up, he shouted to his men. Crash, flash, kabash! Saul fell to the ground. A blinding light exploded around him, and a strong voice spoke to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Saul rubbed his eyes. He couldn't see anyone. Who are you? Saul stuttered. I am Jesus, the voice said. I am not dead. I am very much alive, and I have plans for you. Go into the town and wait. Saul and his men were speechless. They could hear the voice, but they couldn't see anyone. Saul waved his hands in front of his face. My eyes, I can't see. Someone get me up, Saul ordered. Because he could not see, Saul's men led him by the hand into Damascus. There, Saul waited and prayed. He wasn't mean or bad anymore. God had touched Saul's heart. A man named Ananias was in Damascus. Ananias loved Jesus. God told Ananias to go to Saul and pray so that he might see again. But Lord, Ananias said, Saul is a mean man. I'm afraid of him. God said to Ananias, I have chosen Saul to bring my story to many people. I have a plan for him. So Ananias found Saul just as God had said. Ananias prayed for Saul, and Saul was filled with God's Holy Spirit. Suddenly, Saul could see again. Ananias told Saul that God had a job for him. Saul was to tell people about Jesus. Saul was baptized, and his name was changed to Paul. Paul served God for the rest of his life. He became a friend of Jesus and told many people how Jesus changed his heart. So even Saul, one of the meanest guys to followers of Jesus, God still loved him and was able to work through him to spread Jesus' love throughout the whole world. That's kind of reassuring to me that even when I mess up a little bit, or a lot. It's not anything that can keep God from loving you. Thanks for coming up. Let us pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I love sitting around campfires. 
especially when there are good people, good conversation, and s'mores involved. But even without those things, I love the smell. I love the sound of the crackling fire. I could watch flames for hours. It has a positive connotation for me. But I wonder if the smell and sight and sound of the charcoal fire on the beach that morning was triggering for Simon Peter. Now, most likely he had been around a fire again since, but the last charcoal fire that we hear about Simon Peter being around in the Gospel of John is the fire in the courtyard of the high priest that he stood around warming himself as Jesus was tried inside. All of this happens on the night that we commemorate as Maundy Thursday. And it's while he's standing around that charcoal fire that he is questioned. He's asked, you are not also one of Jesus' disciples, are you? And twice he answers, I am not. He is then asked, did I not see you in the garden with him? But Simon Peter denies that too. He doesn't exactly deny knowing Jesus or believing that Jesus is the Messiah. But he denies following Jesus. He denies his identity as a disciple of Jesus. And then we hear about another charcoal fire. A couple of days, a couple of weeks later, we're not exactly sure. But up in the Galilee, the disciples have reverted back to their previous vocation, fishermen. Maybe it was a part of their dealing with their grief, that returning to something familiar, something comforting. But they had already seen the risen Christ. So maybe they were just fishing to kind of kill time, waiting around for the next set of instructions, waiting to figure out what it meant to be sent by Jesus and filled with the Holy Spirit. We don't exactly know why they were there, why they went back to fishing, but that's the story we hear and that they weren't successful at it. All night they caught nothing. And then on the shore there's a figure they will later identify as Jesus, who tells them to put the net in on the other side of the boat. Like a boat's width is gonna make that big of a difference in catching fish. But they do and they are presented with abundance. 153 large fish, so many that they cannot haul the net ashore. Well, they can't haul it into the boat. They do haul it to shore. They are, again, faced with God's abundance, and that's what makes it click in their heads that this unknown figure on the shore is Jesus, their risen Messiah. So Simon Peter rushes to shore. The other disciples follow in the boat, and Jesus, as Jesus does, hosts a meal around that crackling charcoal fire he has fish and bread for them and in the midst of their conversation jesus says to peter some questions do you love me three times 
Peter answers, of course I love you. And Jesus responds with what my intern supervisor referred to in my ordination sermon as the two feeds and a tent. Feed my lambs, feed my sheep, tend my sheep. Two feeds and a tent. That's Jesus' charge to Peter. If the two stories parallel each other, not only with the fire, but the triple questions. Peter has, on that Thursday night, said, I am not his disciple. I was not with him. I am not his follower. But we know that's not true. And even though in the midst of fear, I would guess, he does deny Jesus, Jesus does not deny him. His identity as a beloved child of God from the time he was being knit together in his mother's womb. Jesus takes this opportunity to remind him of his identity and to give him a vocation, not as a fisherman, not even as a follower, as a disciple, but as an apostle, one who is sent with two feeds and a tent. In one fell swoop, Jesus reclaims Peter as a beloved child of God, reminding him of his identity and sends him out with a purpose, with a vocation. And the same is true for us. Maybe not in such a dramatic manner as Peter or Saul, but God claims our identity and reminds us of our vocation as well. At the font, we are reminded of our identity as beloved children of God. God claimed us and knew us when we were still being knit together in our mother's womb. Around the table, We are reminded of our identity as a member of the body of Christ and we're nourished as the disciples were with that charcoal-fired breakfast in preparation to be sent out to go tend and feed to fulfill our vocation. You can think about that idea of vocation in broad terms, like Grace's mission statement, which is to be servants to all people, or in more specific terms, like your paid job as a nurse, a teacher, a first responder, or your unpaid jobs as friend, family member, or neighbor. They are all vocations from God, rooted in your identity as a beloved child of God, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. God has built you up, gifted you, fed you, and sends you out to tend and feed, to share those things that God has gifted to you with others, with all of creation. Because no matter how many times you take the detour, you deny, you turn your back, your identity cannot be changed. You are a beloved child of God, and God can work through you to do God's work in the world. If it isn't good news that the guy who denied Jesus three times was reclaimed, sent, and became the foundation of the early church, I don't know what is good news. But for me, who does 
fall short, who does get scared and deny the truth. It is good news to hear that there is no misstep, no denial, no turning away that can separate any one of us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Please stand as you are able and join with me in singing our hymn of the day. It comes from the hymnal supplement, All Creation Sings, number 939. The music is printed in the bulletin and the words will be projected on the screen. Touch that soothes and heals the hurting Hands that break a loaf of bread Steps that walk beside the weary Bearing burdens in their stead See my hands and feet, said Jesus Love arisen from the grave Be my hands and feet, said Jesus Live as ones I died to save Feed the hungry, clothe the naked Visit ones in need of care Give the homeless warmth and shelter Christ will find a welcome there See my hands and feet, said Jesus Love arisen from the grave Be my hands and feet, said Jesus Live as one to to say love and serve without distinction all those people first and least know within each act of kindness hope and wholeness are increased see my hands and feet said Jesus love arise and from the grave be my hands and feet said Jesus live as ones I died to save hands that beckon little children find a womb prepare a meal feet that rush to share good tidings Christ arisen still reveal. See my hands and feet, said Jesus. Love arisen from the grave. Be my hands and feet, said Jesus. Live as ones I died to save. With the whole church, let us confess our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the father through him all things were made for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven was incarnate of the holy spirit and the virgin mary and became truly human for our sake he was crucified under pontius pilate he suffered death and was buried on the third day he rose again in the course with the scriptures he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. 
We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to, to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation. Holy One of new beginnings, fill us with new life. Send us into the world as you sent your apostles, Philips and James, to invite people to come and see your wondrous acts in Christ. God, in your mercy, Revive ecosystems along coastlands that have been devastated by natural forces and human negligence. Reestablish plant and animal life that purifies air and water and that feeds humans and all other living creatures. God, in your mercy. Hear Accompany laborers who get little rest from their work. Give them hope when they struggle to produce what they need. Give all who labor fair treatment and just wages. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Restore all people who cry to you for help, especially for those listed in our prayer list and those we name now, aloud or silently. Mark, Mark. and all, all the Ukraine. Ukraine. Turn their mourning into dancing, clothe them with joy, and put a testimony of healing and praise on their lips. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Join our voices with angels and creatures and all the saints in praising Christ and bestowing upon him all blessing and honor and glory. Reveal Christ's glory to us and through us in our worship. God, in your mercy, In your mercy, O oh God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share a sign of that peace with one another, both in person and on Zoom. Feel free to unmute if you're joining us on Zoom or use the chat or reactions. Peace the Lord. Lord. Peace of the Lord. The Lord. Peace be with you. With you. We try to take time each week in our worship to acknowledge that all we have is a gift from God, 
our time, talents, and treasures. And there are many ways to use those gifts to do God's work in the world. Sometimes it is mundane as paying the light bill here at church uh, to keep the AC and the heat on so that we can worship and feed and tend and educate and fellowship and all of the other things. But there are so many other ways that we can also do God's work in the world using those gifts and keeping them all in mind. I invite Jacob to pray our offering prayer. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings as you have raised us to new life in Christ. Give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. We praise you for creating the heavens and the earth. We bless you for bringing Noah and his family through the waters of the flood, for freeing your people Israel from the bonds of slavery, and for sending your Son to be our Redeemer. We give you thanks for Jesus, who lived among us, healed the sick, fed the hungry, and with a love stronger than death, gave his life for others. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
Remembering, therefore, his life-giving death and glorious resurrection, we await your promised life for all this dying world. Breathe your spirit on us and on this bread and cup. Carry us in your arms from death to life, that we may live as your chosen ones, clothed in the righteousness of Christ. Through him all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The risen Christ dwells with us here. All who are hungry, all who are thirsty, come. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Grant us peace. the body and blood of Christ given and shed for you. 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 Come to the table of mercy Prepared with the wine and the bread All who are hungry and thirsty Come and your souls will be fed Come at the Lord's invitation Receive from his nail-scarred hand Eat of the bread of salvation of the blood of the Lamb. Come to the table of mercy, prepared with the wine and the bread. All who are hungry and thirsty, come and your souls will be fed. Come at the Lord's invitation, Receive from this nail-scarred hand Eat of the bread of salvation Drink of the blood of the Lamb Come to the table of mercy Prepared with the wine and the bread All who are hungry and thirsty your souls will be fed. Come at the Lord's invitation.
invitation received from this nail-scarred hand. Eat of the bread of salvation, drink of the blood of the Lamb. Please stand as you are able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table to, as witnesses to the resurrection that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God, author of life, Christ, the living cornerstone, and the life-giving spirit of adoption, bless you now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for our announcements. If you're joining us on Zoom and have an announcement for the good of the gathered, I would ask that you would put a note in the chat or use the raise your hand function on Zoom so that we know to spotlight you. Are there any announcements in the sanctuary? <laughs> Dually master announcements. <laughs> Can I get y'all to come to the um, pulpit? It'll save me having to repeat. <laughs> So there is one birdhouse left made by people with disabilities to support people with disabilities uh, by a young man who lives in Virginia Beach. It's on the table in the back. The cost is $15. All proceeds go to charitable organizations of Stephen's Choice. They've raised $85,000 since the family has started building birdhouse. Thank you, Mana, for uh, coordinating that sale. And I'm sure even if that one gets sold, you will tell people how they can go about getting them Just let me know. right from yeah. Stephen. Perfect. Bob. Uh, next blood drive again uh, coming up soon, Saturday, May 21st from 9 to 1. Uh, because we've had such a great turnout in the past, our, our uh, goal has been increased. <laughs> so we need even more donors than typical. So if you're able to donate, or you know somebody who can, please go to redcrossblood.org and put in Grace Lutheran. That'll take you right to the site. Or you can go on Grace Greetings on our website, and there's a little QCR kind of thing, Majigger, and that'll take you right to it also. Uh, so look forward to it. Again, please pass the word. We need every, every blood donation. You can actually save up to two or three people's lives. So thank you. Thanks for coordina coordinating that, Bob. The newsletter for May is out. If you are on our email list, you should have gotten that by email. It's also posted on our website. Uh, there are a couple of paper copies in the Narthex if you would uh, prefer that. There's lots of information in there about everything that's going on in May. Um, and as always, there's information on our announcement sheet. Uh, I wanna highlight a couple of things that are in Grace Greetings but did not make it the announcement sheet this week. Uh, we are looking to hire a new nursery attendant, and we need a search team uh, to lead that effort. So if you are willing to serve on the nursery attendant search team, please let me know. Um, and also, we are doing another musical gifts inventory. When we did it about a year ago, it was very Zoom-focused. So now that we are back to hybrid, uh, we... Uh, the questions are a little different. So if, even if you filled it out a year ago, if you have any musical talent at all, whether you play an instrument or your instrument is simply your vocal cords, uh, please be sure to go through the newsletter, to the link to fill out the musical gifts inventory. We wanna uh, encourage the use of those gifts to God's glory as well. Those are the ones I wanted to highlight. I think Gretchen has, yes, yes. A, has an announcement. Good morning. 
I would like to thank everybody that contributed to the sock drive. We collected 605 pair. Millie uh, delivered them to the homeless shelter and all were very thankful. Thank you so much again for your donations. Thank you, Gretchen, for coordinating that effort and for Millie, uh, to Millie for delivering those. We are so thankful for yet another way where we can fulfill our mission to be servants to all people. Rich, I didn't see anything else in the chat, but in case it missed me, I just want to double check. We're good. Last chance in the sanctuary. Announcements. Then let us stand and sing our sending hymn. It is hymn number 385 from the Evangelical Lutheran Worship Hymnal. Uh, the music is printed in the large print bulletin and is available in the hymnal. The words will be projected on your screen. Good Christian friends, rejoice and sing. Now is the triumph of our King. To all the world glad news we bring. Alleluia, alleluia, uh, alleluia. The Lord of life is risen today. Death's mighty stone is rolled away. Let all the earth rejoice and say, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Greet me in songs of victory, that love that life with will not die, and sing with hearts uplifted high. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Your name we bless, O risen Lord, and sing today with one accord. The life laid down, the life restored. Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Share the good news. <laughs>